A new Mac OS is coming, it's called Sequoia, and along with several new features, it's being injected with AI, Apple Intelligence. Here's what Mac users have to look forward to. It happens every year at WWDC, Apple's developers conference, that the company announces updates to its operating system that wow Mac users with features Windows and Android and even Chrome OS users already have. Part of Sequoia, for example, is iPhone mirroring. It's a continuity feature that lets you see and interact with your iPhone on your Mac with a touchpad and keyboard because your iPhone and iPad can have a touchscreen, but not your MacBook. The feature gives you all kinds of access to your iPhone so you can message, launch and use apps, get your notifications, drag and drop files from the iPhone to the Mac. It's very similar to what can be done with an Android phone and a Chromebook, but much more feature rich than the phone link app on Windows. So so if you have an iPhone and a Mac, this is certainly a nice addition and it's all done wirelessly between devices and your phone stays locked so no one can pick it up and start using it. Another new to Max feature is an update to how you can tile windows. You'll be able to simply drag one to the edge of the screen and it'll automatically suggest how to resize and arrange your windows. What's nice is Apple is also adding new keyboard and menu shortcuts to speed up the process. Two other helpful additions perked my attention. One is a new password app built on the foundation of Keychain's password management. The standalone app will securely hold your credentials and sync them across your devices and autofill them if you want. The second and third, I guess, are new features in Safari, Highlight and Reader. Highlight uses machine learning to find and highlight important information such as directions or a phone number on a web page. Reader, on the other hand, removes distractions and generates a table of contents and an article summary next to the page. Now, while Apple has used the term machine learning frequently and generally steers clear of saying artificial intelligence, for the WWDC keynote, it, well, it still avoided it in favor of Apple Intelligence, the company's personal intelligence system, which favors local generative models instead of cloud-based options, the former offering more privacy and security than the latter, potentially. If you've watched any of the AI demos from Google and Microsoft, Apple Intelligence, when it rolls out later this year, will power tools that seemingly do many of the same AI tasks that can be done with Microsoft Copilot. For example, a new Image Playground app with an Image Wand tool will straighten out a sketch into a more realistic picture, similar to what Microsoft's co-creator tool can do. There will be options to help you write and find specific files and photos and videos based on their content, or pull up details from a text message and use it for other tasks. But again, it's all happening on device. It's only if Apple's intelligence needs more intelligence or a task is too demanding that it reaches for outside help from ChatGPT. But it still asks your permission first before sharing your information with ChatGPT. Apple hasn't released all the details yet about how the relationship between the two works, but it does seem like a step in the right direction when it comes to AI and privacy. Also, something to keep in mind, supported devices include those with an A17 Pro chip or an M series chip, and it's not clear if all Apple intelligence features will be supported on them or if, say, an M3 MacBook will have more tools than an M1 MacBook. So I guess we'll have to wait and see, which is to be expected since macOS Sequoia is only available for developers now and will be released as public beta in July, and then the full release will come later this year. And that's our first look at some of the new features coming to macOS. What do you think? Was there anything you were really hoping for that you didn't get? Let me know in the comments and you can read more about all of Apple's announcements at WWDC at CNET.com. Thanks for watching and you'll see me when you see me.